Wrestling Case File 290. The light bulb conspiracy or planned obsolescence. Um, I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. It's all a fucking scam, baby. All of it. We knew it all along, too. Everyone knows it. We knew it. Well, all and a fucking scam. Just before we get going on uh, what a scam everything is uh, in today's society, in, we should have called it trash society. Um, you know, quick shout out to uh, a fan that's battling cancer right now, uh, Brody. I'm not going to say his last name. I don't know if I should say his last name. No. He didn't, I'll just say Brody. Um, he's been a theorite for quite a few years. OG um, sir. Just messaged us, and, uh, you know, he was hit with some crazy news. He was transitioning for a job, went to get a medical to get cleared to work. Uh, they found a mass in his chest, and he's now battling cancer. Um, so if you want to uh, help Brody, uh, you can hit up his GoFundMe. You can find that on our Facebook group, um, Alien Theorists, uh, you know, and then the Theorite group. And I'll have it pinned uh, to that page as well as our, our main Facebook page if you uh, feel so inclined to donate. So in lieu of that, uh, this episode of ATT is dedicated to uh, Brody and his battle with cancer. Cheers, brother. So, cheers. Pull for you, brother. All right, plan light bulb conspiracy. Um, this one was, uh, you, you know, this is coming off the heels. If you if you're not already on our Patreon, we had a co-conspirators uh, with Dan Zell and I, where we really started going in on what bullshit recycling is, uh, <laughs> and that kind of uh, inspired us to do this episode on uh, what an absolute goddamn scam um, everything is, and that's um, and one of the things is like you know first and foremost is it, it starts off with like can we just agree now there's a, there's got to be a cartel in everything like you may not know about it but there's a cartel for everything there's 100%. a coordinated group in every industry that you could say sets the price in some fashion and we might even be talking about the first even if it's not price cartel. fixing they you know they get they get together behind closed doors and they talk a little bit they, they have to it's some it seems all a little too suspicious sometimes Especially when you get to corp to some industries which have five major players, and they all sit on each other's boards of directors, and they're all kind of <laughs> have shares in each other. Yeah, like, eh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, w- without a doubt. Uh, now, this what we're talking about today—the light bulb conspiracy—obviously starts, you know, with a light bulb. Where are we starting this one off, Dan? Um, <laughs> if you want to talk about the concept of planned obsolescence, like the actual concept doesn't really come into play until the 1930s, but kind of a, the, the earliest expression of this kind of idea of producing a product to producing last a certain shit. amount, of, well, <laughs> to last a certain amount of time, um, less than what could is like the maximum possible that you could get out of a product. So there was, uh, I mean, there is, this starts with an actual kind of conspiracy and you're talking about cartels. So we're kind of mentioning the Phoebus cartel. Some people might've heard about this, but the Phoebus cartel, um, is cited as one of the earliest and pretty much like most obvious examples of planned obsolescence, even though the term hadn't really been coined yet. So in 1924, uh, this cartel was formed by the major light bulb manufacturers, uh, which were at at the time you had like General Electric, you had Osram, which I believe was a German, um, a a German light bulb manufacturer and then Philips. Um, This was the time that, you know, electrification of the world was beginning to kind of take over. So everybody Rolling was power like, lines out everywhere at this time. So you light bulbs had to be produced at an, you know, an extreme rate. You had, the demand was extremely high because you're, you're putting light bulbs everywhere. Everybody wants one. And you know, every the, street every, lamp, every house, every entryway, every like, light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs. So the, now the aim of the cartel was basically these these companies would get together and they would um, they wanted to go ahead and standardize the light bulb life expectancy. So kind of the or after they were cloaks and sacrificed virgins and did a bunch of other diabolical both at the same time, shit. I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. While they were doing this, you know, okay. like, where they led up to that. Um, so That's how they open the ceremonies. <laughs> I think I think the maximum like the maximum lifespan of some of the um, 
like some of the the outliers, like with the maximum light bulb life expectancies. You you had light bulbs that were going up to like two thousand or rated at like two thousand to twenty five hundred hours, I believe, of like operate like operation expectancy is like how long you would have them uh, to expect them to last. And um, what the cartel wanted to do is they wanted to. The cartel like, wanted to that, curtail. Yeah, we can get that closer to zero, boys. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> How close can we push it? You know, it, it's, this was business to them because it was. It, this was expected to be like, okay, if you have, you know, this is a capitalist society. So they're like, you know, if the demand goes down, because once we give them light bulbs and these light bulbs are lasting forever, they won't want to replace these light bulbs fast enough and we won't make enough money. Once so, everyone has light bulbs, no one needs light bulbs. And then, exactly. we're, in a, we're, then we're in a pickle. So this cartel got together, they got everyone together, and they basically said, hey, like, we're going to make all of the light bulbs last the, the pretty much the same thing. If your light bulb doesn't last, this – I, I mean, they formed a, a pretty, like – a pretty serious uh, operation going like they had a laboratory in Switzerland where they all got together and they basically would everybody who wanted to join the cartel and everybody who was in the cartel would like they would regularly test their light bulbs. <laughs> it was like, sure the, like the Boho Grove of uh, light bulbs, right? <laughs> they having gin fizzies. Yeah, gin, um, pop, popping gin fizzies. Gin fizzies and fizz. swinging. Actually, they were, they were was, was it gin, spinning and sinning? Uh, gin filamenties. <laughs> Um, a light bulb joke for you. Hold on, hold on. Can womp, I hold on? Womp. Swing and a miss. <laughs> That's like gonna that. get old. <laughs> <laughs> so they would all ship in their light bulbs, and then they would go ahead and all test them out together. And if your light bulb didn't meet the requirements of being like with t- between, I think, a thousand and twelve hundred hours, like your company would be fined. The uh, bulb was too money. good. Yeah. At the next meeting, um, they just fucking spank you in front of everybody. <laughs> um, so what this I was know is, like they fucking cut it in less than half. Yeah, you know yeah, like, more than half. Fucking, yeah, I, they were they were well. well and, and the, one the, of the average best they did, one of the best dressed. things they did is they were like they were also like, hey, these are safer. We've got together, and these f- this filament is the safest filament out there. What were they, like, they were using like a, they converted like, from something to tungsten, right? What were they using before that was? Um, Edison was well. Edison's bulbs originally were using carbonized bamboo, is what yeah. they were using for their filament, and then that one wasn't. It caused like a you know a, it caused like a film to form on the inside of the bulb, the whole burning of it. So then eventually, I think one of them. I'm not sure about the cartels, but I know like they. I think it was either Philips or GE switched to a, uh, a tungsten filament filled with argon gas, I believe, and then um, that one lasted weird. longer. And then um, they made them thinner or, too, just to you know, oh, yeah, they break easier, they burn out faster. Mm. Yeah, and it was also the different designs of the light bulbs and like how they how they formed them and stuff like that. And it's, um, now I, I remember watching in a doc, the documentary uh, the light bulb conspiracy, but how it was like a slow incremental decrease too. It wasn't like they went overnight; they didn't go from like twenty five to a thousand. Yeah, like twenty five, they dropped them down to two thousand. Then it was fifteen hundred. Then yeah. it was a thousand. I think I think twenty five hundred was the extreme though. That was like there were there were bulbs that could go like, up to twenty five hundred, but the yeah, average I think at the time was eighteen hundred. Like that was they were the, paying kids to go around bust them like it was crazy well it's disappointing because like i don't like the idea of it being slow and incremental because the way i picture it is like a mad scientist working on a fucking light bulb and running it up to one of those rich guys in a cloak and then you'll look at it turn it on be like no shittier guys gotta run back make a new one no shittier (laughs) i want this thing as shitty as humanly possible just it still works but it's not for very long shittier just just works but just less can we can we boost the price also at the same time absolutely (laughs) probably uh, and like, the, and you got to think like the underlying reason for this, like, because this is before the Great Depression, and we'll and we'll talk about in a little bit of how this was utilized to you know to combat the Great Depression. But like, this was strictly a like, we can sell more light bulbs, <laughs> many more light bulbs. And then like the fucking gum, the gum cartel was like, God damn, we can do the same thing with flavor. Well, I mean, yeah, we're, I mean, but yeah, before we're going to talk about it, but before the Depression. There was like more of a, like people would take pride in a product that would be that would last longer, yeah. last longer that you could use for longer that you could se- like re- they could resell at good value. It was like a Amer- like in, well, especially in America like a pride thing, and in Europe at the same I guess well, at the time instead of replacing but then, you would take it and repair it, right? What it was like even there was a repair it, was, culture, yeah, yeah. Like you'd want to fix it as opposed to trading it in for the newer, better, flashier thing, right? 
Um, yeah, and and the cartel eventually did break up. Like it did, uh, you know. I think even prior to the Great Depression, like within it only lasted like for a, not like maybe like eight ten years i think um so which is saying long a enough. group of fucking sneaky greedy assholes couldn't get along with each other for that long well yeah and that <laughs> also they became the target of like antitrust uh lawsuits and uh during Great. the you know, in the u.s at least like they had a number of lawsuits leveled against them for doing this kind of stuff like it is yeah <laughs> so they, would like be, once you think you, yeah you would think that was back when antitrust laws were still pretty you know had teeth um so Anyways, um, yeah, so that's that's what a lot of people agree is kind of the beginning of planned obsolescence or the first kind of example of like a, a, a targeted, uh, you know, formation or effort by companies to kind of do something like that. So planned obsolescence, um, did, did, still after that, it hadn't become like a, a, a in, integral part of the like consumer culture of what the, like the U.S. is is now, there was still some time ramping up into that, and so like Braden mentioned, uh, during the Great Depression, that's when the idea started to kind of take on. Um, started to kind of take shape because you specifically had like a kind of a, well, like a personality behind it uh, to kind of push the actual idea. Um, this person being uh, one Bernard London, uh, who was an American real estate broker. So in 1932, he kind of, he distributed a number of pamphlets titled ending the depression through planned obsolescence. And what he and, did and, was, and it's a good, it's a good idea. Like it's a good idea when you look at it through that way, it's like they're in a fucking rut and so they're like, well, hey, one way we could possibly do this is if we start making things not as good or we you know, we limit these things to the certain lifespan so that we can start encouraging people, consumers to buy and start growing and start like kickstarting the economy. Right. Because there it's it, this will produce jobs like in that theory, in that context, in that time. Good idea. Makes sense. But then if you go back just a little bit, like. We talked about, I think, on the pre-hours here, like Henry Ford and his Model T. So Ford was the biggest automobile sales in the nation, in America. And they were building this Model T for years and years and years. And then General Motors comes along with a slightly stripped-down Model T with a different paint job and looks a little different. And then they started introducing year-after-year models. And that was, like, just before the Great Depression. So that was, like, the initial Kickstarter of this. Like, hey, the, in three years, you're going to want a new car because... You know, it's got this new. Uh, it's got a new color. You, you can get it in green now, or red, or whatever the colors were. You can get yeah. it with a windshield, slight two inches taller. Like the, these small incremental increases in the exact same car every three or four years. People are like, oh yeah. And then they'd sell it on second hand, buy another one, and that ended yeah. up. It, it, it led to this Ford having to take part in that. They're like, okay, we don't make the Model T anymore. We're going to have to compete we got to make new cars every year and they went with the yeah. fucking ford ranger god damn <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the, the the idea or the concept of planned obsolescence hadn't taken it wasn't fully it was formed yet, but you had but you had the cultural shift beginning uh at least in you know in the united states and in other places where it was now becoming the fact that things weren't tied to quality anymore it's like it wasn't it wasn't like a mark of pride to own a own a certain you know, an item for a long time, being able to repair it and it lasting for a very long time. You wanted the newest and the best thing. Um, you know, uh, items and, and products started tying themselves to things like fashion. And you were being like, you know, you want the coolest looking one, best color, new color, you know, this one, whatever, like new type of lettering on the side, whatever, like that kind of thing started taking hold. And that, I mean, you had the roaring 20s, like there was this, you know, that that whole like little you know, the decade of like everybody was like in excess, you know, great Gatsby shit. Everyone, you know? like, everyone was you know? buying light, light bulbs and getting electricity to their homes and it was a party. So it's like a yeah. consumer based economy, right? Like yeah. everybody oh, wants yeah. bigger and better. Let's buy, consume, consume, consume. Goods, yeah. goods, goods were relatively cheap compared to the average salary. Like anyone could afford most stuff. Like anyone could buy a car. I was like back in the four days, like Henry Ford was like, I want all my workers to be able to buy this car easily. Yeah. And it wasn't. And that was kind of like all products. Yeah, and it wasn't like owning things or buying new products wasn't like a necessity. It was more like an expression of your your social and economic status is what it became tied to. Same, so people were buying like today. you own more stuff. I mean, yeah, it's still, yeah, it still is. Same shit today. <laughs> but that's where it, uh, this is where it started to kind of take the, take that form, and then just kind of grew out from there. Um, so there are 
plenty of examples of of planned obsolescence being put into to things and kind of not necessarily to the the um, extent of the Phoebus cartel but you have one kind of one of the other other earlier examples is you have the um, the development of nylon by DuPont mm. and everybody knows DuPont and their shady fucks just when, yeah, always like there's probably there's probably like a hundred things we could talk about. Dupont. I love wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that the same Dupont? Yeah, it's the fucking fox catcher dude. He's a Dupont. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Dupont introduced nylon, which was the world's first synthetic fiber in 1935, and it became pretty much an integral part of a number of different products, from everything from like you know toothbrushes to parachutes. But the most probably the most exciting thing back then was that they were using it to make you know uh women's stockings um that was that is what they were pushing on it they were being like this is this is the greatest thing ever and like there's there's those hairy legs (laughs) everything looks great pantyhose (laughs) yeah (laughs) just throwing a pair of dupont pantyhose and you're ready for a good night out (laughs) <laughs> um, so the designs for nylon stockings uh, were first released in 1939 in the United States, and they were a huge hit. And everybody like, yeah, we got to f- get behind this. And, and bu- everybody was buying them. So um, the the ones that DuPont were producing um, were advertised as offering a combination of both durability, elasticity and affordability that was you couldn't compete uh, with Ray, like rayon stockings at the time was the other direct competitor, but they weren't even close to as good as the nylon ones were. Um, so, you know, they have plenty of like old advertisements. You can go like, you know, towing your car with it, with the DuPont stockings and stuff like that. Never, they'll never run. Um, is, is what they were. <laughs> I love the fact that that used to be an ad because I'll be like, you'd be lucky to fucking drag an egg with one of those things now without a fucking tearing them. <laughs> I can't even get my leg in one. (laughs) Got up two sizes. Um, So now the thing is, it's like, okay, so leading up to World War II, uh, you know, nylon became used for things and military purposes pretty much. And it was like kind of pretty pretty much an embargo, uh, embargo, but like you couldn't, you couldn't put them out. They weren't going to be publicly putting that stuff out. All nylon was going to the production of like wartime production stuff like that and so but um after post world war ii dupont realized that hey if we make our we've we've been making these great stockings but the thing is is like they last too long they yeah our they sales good again our sales are starting to decline yeah so we're gonna actually go ahead and you know this was a conscious decision on their part um according to people um uh, like who worked within the company um, have kind of made comments about them being like, okay, they told their engineers, basically, we want you to make a shittier stocking. We want you to go in, change shittier. the chemical composition of what you make of what you make and make them shittier. We want them to Same be as before, but shittier. not last as long. <laughs> um, and it was like, no, it was noticeable. Cause after, you know, World War II, people were talking about like, Oh man, these stockings, like they definitely don't last as long as they used to. They're, they run a Nothing lot. Nothing lasts as long as they, they don't build them like they used to. How do they mm-hmm. test pilot that shit? You get like just a bigger lady at the plant. All right, try them on. They run. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Mass produce. Ship, fucking ship them out. <laughs> no, they just said, they had up there stamps it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just like, I mean, women weren't much into the engineering back then. And it's like, no, you just had a male scientist like trying them on, like putting them on, <laughs> just walking in there, just say, lift up your pant leg. Like, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Show us some Dance leg, Edgar. Us. Show us some Dance leg, Edgar. Do the Charleston. Yeah, right. ah, there you go. All right, run. To- Perfect. I love it. <laughs> um, so by making these shittier, you know, and making these shittier stockings out of uh, inferior uh, chemicals and stuff like in, in you know, recipe or whatever, um, people, uh, ladies would have to buy replacements more frequently, therefore driving, you know, driving profit. So on both those, the dollar signs. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that's not, it's something to be expected almost like this concept this doesn't translate like... well to the podcast world. <laughs> yeah, um, it does. Cause we've been planning ours to get shittier and shittier as we go. Cause we're like, we're there too. Yeah, but it's, it's not, le- it's not <laughs> leading to more sales though. though yeah. It? It's not leading yeah. to more sales. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's not something plant obsolescence is a thing that kind of is now. I mean, almost we don't, it's everywhere. Like, you know, you just it, know it. Uh, everything you can pretty much expect to 
to not last as long as it does. Um, you know, if it's people cool. remember, uh, like, I, I mean, when we talked about this and we said we were going to do this, I was like, oh, yeah, planned obsolescence. That's the thing. I remember, you know, 2017. That was recently. That's when Apple was caught. Apple like, got, uh, yep. Like, you know, I mean, tech companies are probably the, the most, oh, if 100%. not the top, if the top, if not one of the most, um, like blatant offenders or of the, the kind of planned obsolescence. And that, dude, that, like, and that Apple one, like it's almost more malicious because the hardware worked fine, but as they updated the software, it would make the hardware run slower or not interact with each other. So your battery would die faster. Your everyone would, the phone itself probably was fine, but the new update wasn't compatible with the old, har, old hardware on purpose. So every Been docking an update since 2012. Yeah. So every I mean, two or three nor, years, you got you want a new nor, phone because this thing's just not as fast as it used to. I mean, like, not ah, even, that's our fault. <laughs> yeah, even bad. before the even before the iPhones, like even their iPods, like when they were like some of the original iPods were only lasting for like like 18 months. I think was like the expected battery time on that, which is it fucking like wild. A, that's legit. Awful, how expensive were they back then? Dude, really expensive. Those yeah. fucking big old bricks. Yeah. And the thing is, like, 18 months? I'm like, that's not a lot of time at all. No. And you're like, that's the design. You're like, we designed them to fail at the 18-month mark. Like, it's wild to me. Uh, um, but, yeah, back I to the... I have one that I refuse to get rid of. It's <laughs> t- I have it. It doesn't work. It stopped working. But I'm like, it's a I collector. I spent too much money uh, on it. It's basically a hard drive in there. You need to get that thing out and... Um, but yeah, like, uh, but Battery Gate, Battery Gate is what we kind of what it ended up naming the um, the whole Apple battery uh, scandal. And so in 2017, you know, it was discovered that Apple um, was releasing the software updates, like um, like Zell mentioned, and that were basically throttling the performance on your iPhones. And I I remember following the articles about this and being like, My yeah, holy shit, that's down. fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, but it also makes sense because you're like, you know, you're bat, you know, you're plugging in your phone. And you're like, it doesn't charge. You know, the charge doesn't stay as long as I mean, it was noticeable. And people were kind of just being like, OK, maybe my phone gets old. But I, but this is kind of part of the tech thing where it's like most of these tech companies, they uh, like the life expectancy for most of these tech things is like two years. And, the, and like they know that. And they're like, OK, these people well, are going to probably buy a new one in two years and be like, OK, yeah, like it's. I mean, that was kind of well, the idea. Well, it's not idea. even probably. It's, we're going to entice these people because instead of planned obsolescence, we're going to put a fancy new fucking term on it. We're going to see upgrade. Yeah. Oh, this isn't obsolete. It's time to upgrade because this one's fucking blue and the one you had last year <laughs> was fucking black. And this well, one it's takes like, a slightly better picture. And this one, and then, you know what? This one comes with fucking U2 album on it. Like, sweet. What? And even with Apple, like yeah. with, with the battery gate, like with them getting sued and shit. It's like, yeah, they were like, ah, whoops, our bad. And they're like, here's a $50 credit to the Apple store. Right? That's all <laughs> like, they got? Well. well, they were like enticing sales, right? So like a lot of people say that like the lawsuit may have worked out in their favor, even though they had to pay money. Yeah, they ended up paying, like in total, I think Apple ended up paying $500 million, Ooh, uh, now, which kind of came to about like, it came to like $25 per person like per ipod owner or whatever like uh, iphone probably in the form of coupons Um, though probably (laughs) but it did i mean people have said it did make it did make a dent in their like their thing but again short term but but very short term because the the one that i was reading because i was just like i was doing on deep dives on kind of like apple and other products like two of the ones i want to talk about first one is like macbooks from like 2015 to like 2018 um their hard drives are like not solid state drives and they're like designed they're like bad like not good like hd drives they're like the spin-up ones and they're like yeah. you can just go and they're hard for you but like a, you can go to like a mac guy or like one of those like computer guys and he'll just fix it for you and he's like i can i can make it run as good as a new one cool like with just because you know, i think mine's like 2016 yeah, like that's what because I was just talking to a guy about because my laptop is so slow. And he's like, "Yeah, I can fix it, no problem. Don't get rid of it." He's like, "I can make it work just like brand new." I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "They just make them shitty." <laughs> I was like, "Damn." You want a prime example of this, like one that I'm living right now? Yeah. So my kid, I went out and dusted off all my old Ninja Turtles for him. He's got them. He loves and plays with them all the time. The new movie came out. Got to get the new toys, obviously, right? Obviously, yeah. The old ones are busted. Like, the old ones are old. We need the new ones. He's got the new ones. The the two of them are already broken. And my fucking turtles from 1988 are still kicking it. But they're genius because they're genius because now I got to replace it. My kid's in love with that toy. He needs it again. You know, he's devastated when it breaks. So then you're fucked. 
yeah, like it's, it's that's a that's an cheaper interesting plastic. One because, yeah, yeah design like especially with baby stuff because you'll like you'll just go get a new one. There's been tons of stuff that's broke. Like my baby monitor just broke. I literally instantly was like, well, there's another hundred and fifty bucks. Got to order a new one. Obviously, I'm going to scam them and send back the old one. Say it was the new one that didn't work, but you know that's yeah, neither yeah, here nor well, there. Right, right. right. The best hypothetically, that's what you would do. That's what it, someone, some low person someone, would do. Some me. low life would do that. Not me. Uh, the other one, people might remember this viral one from years and years ago. And it, it, when I read into it, I was like, it sparked a memory. I was like, oh, shit, I remember that. And that was phone blocks. If everyone mm. remembers, like, 2012, 2013, there was a company starting that had a concept blocks. idea for phone blocks. And what it was a was modular blocks? for a mo- It was called a modular phone. And how it worked was because at the time, cell phones were, like, I think – leading the charge or like quickly outpacing every other electronic for ending up in the like electronic recycling so the idea was was to cut down on that electronic waste so what they had was they had like a like everyone you would have like an iphone looking like basically it'd be like your computer box and then you would have plug-in blocks that you can plug in so you everyone can customize your phone any which way so if you really like photos getting the fucking thing on your on your game boy Little picture, yeah. print out a picture like that. Oh, yeah, exactly. So you can okay. plug in, you can like plug in what blocks you want. So if it's like you like to play games, you could, you know, have the controller adapters and plug in a faster processor or a better video card for a bigger screen. And then, what like, if you this? like the camera, it was called phone blocks. What year was this though? 2012, 2013. Yeah, 10 years ago. Right? So, and you, you know, like you wanted a good camera, you would buy a, so it's like, you know, you, you could buy a base phone for, you know, however much, and then just upgrade pieces to it if you wanted. It was a PC was, in your pocket. Yeah. The idea was, was that would cut out on just throwing away an entire phone and being like, I need an entire new phone. It was trying to cut down on that waste. Well, Google bought that. Google bought that. And for two years, they're like, this is great. We're doing it. We're running it. This is going to be the next big thing. And then they just quietly didn't tell anyone and just fucking terminated that program. Just never ran it anymore. Just buried it. Right? Uh, and, and, like, even the co- there's a company. Uh, what's it called here? I had the name. Um, One Army. Dot Earth. And they're like, yeah, remember phone blocks? And they kind of go through the mission statement of phone blocks. It like, gets acquired by Google. And Google does absolutely nothing. Right? And just, like, killed it. And, like, the reason they killed it is because, like, it's not as profitable, right? You're not selling, you know what I mean? Like, it's not as profitable than to just sell someone an well, yeah, entire new $1,000 phone in two years. selling new attachments. You'd be like, oh, well, yeah. that attachment's fucking old and shitty. You need the new one. <laughs> um, I wanted one so bad. Me too. Yeah, I remember seeing the concept. That was, that was dope. pretty, it was I pretty neat. I remember that shit. Yeah. There's, why, there's no reason that wouldn't have worked. Maybe, maybe back then that's, but now we're 10 years later. If they would have kept with it, it would have been perfect. You would have had, you could have got an awesome phone, like a... Something that looked just like a Galaxy or an iPhone. Pop off the back, upgrade this every couple of years. It'd have been amazing. Yeah, and everything but now, just sits in your case. Yeah. But then on that same topic, though, how much more would you pay for a phone like that? Baseline. Like, okay, this phone's going to last me for 10, 15 years. I kind of can upgrade it and upgrade it. Would you pay a lot more? Would you pay? Would you, like, well, say I think the, the, say I the think base the phone the with the back was like two grand to start. But that phone's going to save you 10 grand over 10 years. But most people buy their phones through like you rent your phone pretty much yeah, right pretty you pay five or ten dollars a month and you get a brand new phone every year or two you toss it back in like what model that's like that's like how much more would you to make it profitable how much more would that phone have to be initially i don't know i'm not sure it wasn't right? buying that's... that in 2012 i'll tell you that much. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're, getting uh, the, you're getting the, you're renting the phone every month but it's it's just it's frustrating when you see these things. And I'm like, calling fucking Rogers and tell us and lying, telling them I'm canceling my plan, so they send me a new phone. Dude, it it just makes you wonder like how many great ideas are out there that no one's heard of yet because people, investors and stuff, look at them, they run the numbers, are like it's too good. No, it's not. It's crazy. Like how like how much better stuff could be? That. Or they get acquired just like that by a big company comes in, right? A big company swoops in and is like, we love this idea, we're gonna make your dreams come true. Right, come on with us, and then they just fucking they buy the rights and then they kill it, and they're just like, they now it's it ours. They now. just make it shittier. Yeah, we're never doing it. Yeah. I mean, it happens. It happens. We we just watched it happen. Like how many how many of those are just sitting out there? Yeah. Like how many how many battery crazy. patents? How many all these other things are like? Oh yeah. Hey, electric cars are going to be a great idea. 
you have a battery that can run for how long? 100,000 hours. Ooh, can we bring that down well, to like 10,000, 20,000? Well, you know, and it, these these nothing happens to these motherfuckers until they get caught with their pants down. Because like just like the light bulbs, right? Forever we've had these shitty light bulbs until LED technology kicked off. Then it's like you would have thought that light bulb technology just leaped hundreds of years forward. They're like, "Well, we got a 19,000 year light bulb you can put in. You can put it in right now. It'll never die." <laughs> like you're like, "Fuck let, you." <laughs> let alone we've had what a 130 year light bulb that's still kicking it. I mean, LEDs yeah, weren't invented until like recently <laughs> yeah but then all of, a, all of a sudden like you go you go into home depot what i'm saying is you go into we had fluorescence home depot right now and you look at light bulbs like every light bulb's like lifetime light bulb lifetime light bulb this light bulb it's because no one wants light bulbs anymore because a lot of leds are more cost effective to run in your home everything's getting cheaper so now they're like fuck right yeah. but had had you just not got greedy and made long lasting light bulbs people probably wouldn't have paid to make the switch Right? They would have been like, well, I don't well, need to go well, buy, well, any. LEDs I don't need to are, buy an LED. LEDs are more efficient and brighter, so I don't... Yeah. But until it goes out... <laughs> like, I, wouldn't want that 100, I wouldn't want that 100-year light bulb in my house. I wouldn't <laughs> want five of those. I'd rather have, like, five LEDs. Like, I don't want that tiny little That's light bulb. That's a good point, though. That like, lights nothing. <laughs> we, we say <laughs> LEDs only been out in the, in the public for, like, 20 years. Like, how long before that, I wonder, was that technology tied up by people buying the patent, trying to suppress? Like, no... Nope. We don't, not, the big light, not there. big light bulb big light bulbs have got them probably right? Again, well and like the, we were kind of saying there's a there's a light bulb that's been where is it Ir- irving california liverworth liverworth, liverworth fire california. department yeah, liverworth. Uh, california california it's been burning for 130 years they actually had like a hundredth birthday celebration for it oh, wait, they saying happy birthday to it it's the fucking they say, like the whole mascot. town comes there's a 24 7 live stream of it and the you light bulbs watch. lasted uh it's outlasted that's two so webcams stupid Right. And here's the thing. It's like the funniest thing to me is like it's painted like when you watch this and you're like people are like ah, happy birthday light bulb. Wow. A hundred years. And it's like it's painted as if this is some sort of fucking miracle and not that we're being gouged with every other fucking light bulb you've ever seen die. You're like, no, well, then- they just didn't change this one to the shitty bulbs when they all made their fucking pact with the devil. Well, the cool thing about that one, if you want to know more, it's in the documentaries, The Light Bulb Conspiracy, is uh, there was a certain light bulb builder who had a special like, f- special blend of his own herbs and spices for his filament <laughs> that no one else knew. So, And this he guy had created it. He died with it. He didn't pass it on. No one could figure out how this filament was made. And there's, I'm not, they, that's the famous one. But I, I guess if you look around, there is more of those that are out there around, but not very many. And he just, he took it to the grave and no one knows where, like how how to make that light bulb anymore, or if they do, well, it's they probably do. Forever. They probably do, but they're like, no, <laughs> we never knew. <laughs> well, now well, I bet it you also wouldn't it be pointless. Well, I mean, except no. for posterity, it'd be no, like here okay. it is. <laughs> here, here's it. You bring that bu- now. You're like now. You say the now because it's kind of retro that type of a type of bulb. Now you bring that back as like a. Artisan light bulb. Uh, artisan yeah. light bulb, like old yeah. school. Throw it into Unlimit- hipster bars, like you know, Li- yeah, lifetime cra- warranty your craft, on the filament. Your craft breweries can all light their yeah, their, yeah. Yeah, their think, brush steel think, countertops. With well, I think fucking, that's part of the legislation when you year open light bulbs. A- when you open a brewery, microbrewery, I think it's part of like a, every like legislation in North America. You have to have old Edison light bulbs for the aesthetic. I think so. I, 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 heard you, I, heard you, I heard you get a tax credit actually if you do like <laughs> anything pre 1930 you get a tax credit anything to fuck big led eh? yeah. <laughs> big bulb still got a couple of tricks up their sleeve <laughs> we'll give you a subsidy to use our shittier bulbs that are less cost effective or more cost effective That's all right just before we just before we talk about a few other things about planned obsolescence we're going to take a break grab a beer and we're going to be right back.
Um, everyone, everyone watching the live stream, I got a peek behind the break because yeah. you, like, well, you guys didn't actually go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I knew it. You lied. <laughs> <laughs> he lied to us. Bunch of, li- bunch of phonies. Yeah. Now I bet you. Now, now, now you want to go the other way. I'm gonna be we're complaining about breaks. that. We got beer. We got beer. We got a break. We did stuff. Got a bubble. <laughs> oh, that's all I have. Turn <laughs> um, that shit off, bitch. Uh, so the thing, with, the thing with planned obsolescence is like, yeah, yeah, like you could say it's a conspiracy. You could say, you know, it, it, these things, these things happen, but it's it's kind of difficult. It's collusion, dude. It's collusion. Well, right it's kind of difficult. It's difficult for people to, 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 for companies to produce products when the when the environment punishes you. The the market punishes you for making a product that is too good. And so there's like the prime example is like there's one this year, like this year, 2023, in the summer. And I remember seeing this article when it popped up and being that instant uh, maker of the instant pot. And I think a lot of people had this and like a lot of it. I have one, um, which is like it's like a rice cooker combination, everything cooker, you know, pressure cooker. It's a great little product. Yeah. It's an, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And like it came it, it kind of came to it came into prominence and then kind of took off like right before the covid lockdowns because everybody started cooking at home and like all this. And everybody pretty much like it was kind of just slowly ramping up. And then once that happened and everybody started cooking at home, like boom, it like shot up and everybody was getting one and everybody had one. So the Instant Pot is, is different from a lot of other you know products that are out there because they put a lot of like research and they put a, a, a lot into the um, a lot of development and yeah. R and D into this we're like, product. It's we're like, built- we got to pitch. We got to pitch this to moms, and moms will pitch it to anyone else. <laughs> um, the the actual like the product itself is is extraordinarily well built it's built with like you know good uh superior uh materials and things like this and it lasts for it's it's built to last it's like you're not gonna replace it but therein lies the problem because once they once they got this out and once it pretty much like breached market saturation point um the sales in like 2022 dropped like almost like 25 percent like from the year before like it's once it hit that point and everybody's got one of these things, it, nobody wants to buy anymore because you don't need another one. So, you know, why, you know, so then what happens is they ended up that instant brand ended up fire, filing for chapter 11 bankruptcy earlier this year. And basically they said, they said that it's not necessarily like, Hey, we're failing or you know, nothing like that. They, they kind of branded it as a restructuring. And they also got acquired by another big company and they're like, conglomerate exactly. and somebody bought them up but, and then all of a sudden you're gonna see fucking a little less instant pots well what they're saying is like when, <laughs> when they got cookers, bought up <laughs> well when they got bought up what the company you know again again these 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 giant conglomerates that buy up this stuff are driven you know mostly by profit so they're pretty much saying that you need to make more money so therefore we need shittier. to make so so not even shittier but like they got to do things like make different colors of instant pots and you're like why <laughs> you're like i need a red one you know i need the pink one Everyone, i need the, I need the, the limited week. edition hello kitty version of the instant pot and you're like what okay that's my aesthetic but, 
but that, but what I'm saying is like you know the the market like actually punishes companies for be, making a good product. You make a good well, product, then nobody's going to buy gonna, it again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counterpoint that for a second because I've ha- I have an Instant Pot that I've used twice, and I don't like it compared to a traditional uh, like slow, slow cooker. cooker. Uh, I've, I thought when it was bought for me, it was bought for me as a gift. I would have never went out and bought one myself because I don't mind putting stuff in the oven. And to be honest, putting that thing and that's pressurized and it has all these warnings scary. that are like I could pop off. It's so like, I'm going to blow this thing fucking the top off my house. Uh, and then it's like, I always think that I'm like, you know, like cooking is cooking chicken in 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm like that. Yeah, okay. Well, Mandatory. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm like, all right. Like, I, I just, I thought it was a fad. To be honest, for myself, I thought it was a fad piece of cooking equipment, and I thought the same thing with the air fryer. And now the air fryer, I use all the you fucking time. Wrong. Yeah, air fryer is in. I'm like, I want an oven size one. Air- <clears throat> Well, that, that's that's the funny thing that you say that is that air fryer is just a mini convection oven. That's it. That's the only. Di- there's no difference. If you have a convection oven with an element and a fan that circles, it's just a giant air fryer. And everyone's like, I got an air fryer and also got a, an oven. What? Uh, yeah, dude. You've been it's telling a, me I'm duped? And it, I could uh, be just doing this stuff in my air big fryer oven? Is the, air fryer is a fucking genius marketing thing where, like, it's an air fryer. It's just an element with yeah. a fan, and it just cooks your food the fan fast. just on top, that it, big top it part. It just sucks it up. Fan and just and if you have a convection and oven, you set the convection bake, you hear the fan spin. You can do it in a toaster oven. Toaster ovens have convection, convection setting, too. Like, toaster ovens have convection settings and do the same thing. <laughs> convection oven is not fancy. fancy. No. It's just no. it's just a fan in your oven. It's yeah. not... It just it moves the co- air out the top. It might like cost... If you're going to buy a brand new one, it might cost, like, a little bit more. But it's not, like, one of those fancy, like, quick boils or, like, the other fancy stuff you can get. Yeah, dude. It's just... That's it. It's also probably marketed to people who, like, don't have have one. So it's, like, people who live in small apartments and things like that, they might not have, like, a... 95% of people have a fucking oven. And a lot of people have convection ovens now. And then I I just got a great... 95% of people. (laughs) Sure, Dick. I'm just saying, like, everyone that I know has an oven. Most people probably have convection. Even well, if they don't how many know they have convection they live in oven. apartments, apartment buildings. Yeah, people have people have ovens in apartment buildings. Yeah, a lot of people don't have them around, like an apartment. Everyone buildings. I've ever worked in always has an oven. Yeah, every single one. Have you worked in one in the United well, States? I'm just saying I can only go with my local ones. Okay, no, yeah. I'm sure some of them have just like a cooktop and they don't know of an oven, but it's yeah. very few. Anyways, yeah, just a, that's there you go, giant. Air fryer is a convection oven. So hold on, Zell, Zell's not wrong. Ninety percent of households worldwide have an oven, an oven appliance. But with like a convection thing on the bottom, right? it just says. No, that, prob- have- that, that probably includes like toaster, toaster ovens oven. and like just small ones. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I got a regular. But I mean, my oven's really old. Mine's got one of those little dragons that live in the bottom, like a Flintstone. So it just blows <laughs> flames on it. So I don't think. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's gonna air fry nothing. <clears throat> Anyways, that's it. That was just a little tangent because. People. That's good to know. I thought it was funny when people were like, I got an I air fryer. I get the convenience of an Instant Pot, too, but I was in the same boat as Braden. But, I, was like, I was all excited for it, but I'm too scared to use it. But I, I, all the I use mine for like, rice all the time. But I, I, I'll be 100%. <laughs> I have an air fryer that I got for Christmas that I use, and I also have a convection oven, which I also use. I just have two. I use them both. Sometimes well, at the hey, same listen, time. Why don't you put your air fryer in your convention oven and yeah. then it's twice as good? Cool. Double it up. Double it. Double yeah. it. Cut that good time. Yeah, good, I like it. Good thinking, boys. Buddy, you're about you guys, to are, sca- you sca- you guys are scared to use a pressure cooker, but you're like, I'm going to put my air in it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put my air fryer inside my convection yeah, oven. Yeah. But if you came man? to my house and saw all the extension cords running around here, you'd be like, what is going on here? <laughs> Fire marshal's nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like... You got your fucking air fryer hooked up right beside your hot tub, don't you? Right yeah. above it, yeah. so I can reach in. It's on a little yeah. like styrofoam floating shakes. raft yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> hot tub has a middle piece you can plop in there. The I put tub. it. I like to the hot tub. I like to put the it right in the tub. middle there hot tub. Uh, when I'm making my uh, the Wesley Arms Hotel. <laughs> my chicken strips. Um, my chicken fingers. Uh, Slam shakes. So one one thing about. I mean, we didn't we didn't mention about battery gate like battery gate the like the the whole apple scandal is what kind of people say was a catalyst for the like bringing planned obsolescence as the kind of like you know that market strategy that companies are using they brought it to like the attention of like major you know 
pretty much like government out into the public. Like people were actually kind of starting to catch on to like this actually being a thing, you know, probably, you know, also due to the internet and widespread information, all that kinds of other factors. But this, this event is usually attributed to kind of like popularizing and, and starting to galvanize the movement for people to rise against uh, fight Plana, back, fight Fuck back the against man. Plaza, Plaza, what, and also like it, what it, like, when you start to look into like this style of business practice where you're just like, yeah, we're just going to keep making it so people have to keep consuming. It seems like really counterproductive to like the current like climate initiatives that we have in North America where you're like, hey, we, we've got to reduce our impact. And then you're like, another phone, another one. <laughs> like, you're like, well, the best part about the, who are the people that are pushing these green initi- initiatives up your fucking ass all the time? A lot of these, these companies fucking are companies. big supporters of it. And they're the worst. They're yeah. the reasons for these issues. They're like, like you should feel hilarious. bad. <laughs> yeah, you should feel like shit, but they buy see, more. They see yeah. the opportunity. They're taking it. Yeah. Um, so, so there has been pushback and there has been, um, you know, even, even before, you know, recent times, like there has been, um, legislation passed, like certain types of, uh, certain laws and stuff enacted, at least in some, I know in the United States, like there have been laws that have basically put, was it the Magnuson something warranty act? I think it was like basically kind of uh, regulating how warranties work and like what, what is required to be put into a warranty. And then I think they get you know, you either get subsidied or something because you have a warranty on your product, um, encouraging companies to provide warranties for their products and stuff like that. But, 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 um, more recent stuff, you have like the European union, which is kind of a big one now. I mean, we've seen with other, you know, certain products, like, you know, the design on the app on the the iPhones, like you got to get USB C and it has to be USB C. So everybody can use the same fucking thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use. Thank God for fuck's sakes, man. That's, Um, that's insane. Which now, now you need a fucking dongle to listen to fucking music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, get fucked. Um, and then we all got to change our plugins because they got fucking those stupid bricks. We got new. Oh they're like, we're going to change both ends of the cord. I'm like, keep the one side USB, you assholes. Like, well, I don't have to change to both you. ends. We're this not going to give you that piece. He's though. fucking losing it. This all is- it drove me crazy. The first time I got a double ended USB C, I was like, are you out of your goddamn minds? Everything is USB plug in. Are you fucked? The one, sense. the other end, you idiot. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a USB to USB. We were just talking about the one end that you all fucking changed. The, we were all fine with the one end USB. No one was complaining about that. None. They're the same well, speed, 3.2 and USB C. Oh, God damn it. Drop me now. Now I got to buy a new Stupid. fucking brick thing. And you're like, oh, God damn it. And you, you're like, I'm like, you're not going to send that? You're not going to send that with the product? A new no, br- they don't give it I'm to like, you. I'm like, oh fuck! That's just like that's just a cable, fuck you. Cable not consumer. included, right? Cable yeah. not included. That's, that's the a best fuck one. you for the con- to the consumer for making them have to make that switch. That's what oh, that is. They're like, no, they, oh, you they're, like that? yeah, but they're reason. <laughs> That's the law. The reason it's been the law. like, oh, we have to. More, it's more, ecolo- it's more uh, ecologically sound or whatever. When you've already fucking you lost gotta, the cord and you have to buy a, order another one right, anyway. And, then, and you got to throw out all your other shit, all the old shit that you have that doesn't fucking work anymore because it's obsolete. I've got 45 of those fucking power oh, bricks. Fucking <laughs> those USB ones. They're all useless um, now. I'd like to fucking I threw them all in the ocean. brick on dickhead's fucking <laughs> desk. Uh... Dude, that was the most maddening thing, though, honest to God. Oh. That, when I got that, I was like, I, I was blown, away, like, absolutely blown away. Because then it's like, you go to the dollars, because I'm like, well, I'm just going to go get one of the dollars. Or dollars doesn't have one. So I was like, I, I have to go to an electronics store to get one of these motherfucking things. Yeah, and then I went, and they were like, thirty nine ninety nine. I was like, you 40 bucks. motherfuckers. <laughs> so I was that, like, that's just, that was a fuck you it to really, the consumer. That's really what struck a chord with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so like the EU has put into initiatives, you have things like the eco design directive, which is pretty much, uh, you know, EU puts down requirements for energy related, uh, products, which ensure that they meet specific energy efficiency and environmental criteria. And then this will, you know, indirectly increase a product's lifespan and, you know, hopefully in practice, um, in theory. And then, um, they have stuff like you know, two year guarantees, two year guarantees are mandated in the U in the EU on these, and you know, and, also and, made, and it you know, runs out in two years and one month. 
always right. and make his well i mean even here it's like most of the time like we get it in my office like for it and stuff like we all of our computers come it's like a two-year warranty and which is usually like the lifespan of like a heavily you know any any heavily used laptop or something like that like yeah. two years you're gonna be like it's like and pretty honestly, good and, and you honestly, have to replace we, it maybe. We, as a society we have to stop frowning upon at in, in like you know 23 months just fucking kicking the shit like ninja kicking your printer off the desk and sending it in for warranty and just getting a new one like that shouldn't be frowned upon because of what these guys have been doing to us like we should that should be regular like this thing's 23 months Buddy, and then you just like kapow it off to, the desk it's cheaper to buy a new fucking printer than to replace the ink yeah. no no joke i just That's did this truth. so i had That's i had a print i had a printer for like two years i never use it very often uh the ink ran out and then it was kind of, it was already kind of not working that well, but I probably could have bought ink maybe one or two more times without having to seriously try and fix it. And then I went to go buy ink, and I realized for like five dollars more, I got a brand new printer with both tubes of ink, regular full. size, full, legit. And I so I bought a new printer. I've done it a few times. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, That's yeah, how cheap they are. We um yeah and we and we didn't go into it but I'm sure people will either remind us but we could talk about it now but yeah like printer like printer technology is one uh. of the the one of the biggest uh, you know toner uh, criminals need your toner this whole thing yeah you can get your toner but you know apparently there are there are some things um like about about some printers so I guess like. W- the way that the printer work or a lot of inkjet printer at least inkjet printers not lasers yet but like uh inkjet printers work is that basically like on the print head there's like a little cleaning mechanism and every time that it's supposed to clean um the, it kind of like empties out into this little trough that where it kind of like it puts like the excess ink in there and it keeps it from you know getting blotchy on the papers and stuff like that so um once that gets full it can cause problems with the printer and the printer senses that and usually says like errors are printer error blah 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 i have to do a cleaning da 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 well right my office my office just recently kind of had this problem where it's like yeah something with the print head assembly is fucked up where do you work dan then, uh i work in a, a government contracting office no like, he didn't know. give up the, he didn't um, give up the fucking name so uh in there they uh you know it's basically we're trying to like get people to come in to repair it's like can you come in and you know clean it out repair it and they're like yeah it's going to cost 350 dollars per printer like we paid 400 dollars for these printers like I, no like we'll just buy new printers like why okay and you know that's, that's what they want you that's, that's what they want you to do, do. but Fucking there's another thing apparently saber. that some of these printers, printers um some of these printers at least one guy went through i believe and we watched it in that documentary where it was like one of the guys went through and it said that apparently there is like some of these some of these printers it's not necessarily like the print head sensor there's like another little chip that was basically recording and it would it would it measure how many printing jobs that you did and it would limit it would like no. limit like once it hit that number like the printer's it's gonna like, throw you an bang, error it's just gonna fucking it's gonna, self-destruct no well, it throws up some generic error that says like whatever you know and it's like you can't fix it because i think it's even more nefarious i think there's whatever. i think those all the printers are all connected to the internet and then there's someone monitoring your printer and they monitor your job <laughs> they monitor your office space and they pick a day when everyone's in a really bad mood too and then they just kill it yeah they really need to print off these documents they're very time sensitive like yeah, there's a lot of stress. People pulling out their hair, and then they you go to push. You push the big green green, green button. Someone's just fucking with you. It, it's it's honestly like yeah, how do I get that job? It's so <laughs> That'd be a great job, wouldn't it? It'd be so satisfying. Like the fact that there's a chip. They have a basically like a fail chip that's just just like it's meant. It's only job is to make the printer fail for no reason other than to just trick the printer. It tricks the printer into thinking it's failed. And it has, and you just pop up that chip, your printer works fine. It's it like that. The fact that that is okay, <laughs> you're just like, yeah, it's, it's fine, no big deal. It's business, baby. Got to keep that economy moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you have other things like you have other countries like within the EU, like specifically, you have France, which has like they have apparently an a- anti obsolescence law, and so France has made this planned obsolescence they've made it illegal essentially that's because um, the french people would probably kill people at the business yeah, if they, found, they yeah, will yeah. riot and they destroy you um, yeah. they, they don't fuck around yeah for the them like if some <laughs> if they find 
I'm sure it's 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 probably kind of difficult to kind of like prove it in court, like uh, for planned obsolescence. Like it is probably a little bit difficult to do that. But um, it, you know, if the if a company is found to have be practicing planned obsolescence, um, then they are subject to fines and even jail time for executives, like uh, according to the Fran the French law. Um, uh, also, uh, France has a repairability index, which apparently, you know, a recent French law requires that um, electronic devices, which this includes smartphones, this includes laptops, have to come with a repairability score, uh, which encourages manufacturers to create products that are easier to repair. Um, and this kind of goes into right into the idea of the right to repair laws, which people are mm. fighting for. Um, I think a lot of people probably remember like the John Deere, like the John Deere thing where um essentially farmers had to fight at least in the united states they had to fight for the right to repair their uh, own equipments because insane. john deere like the john apparently like the more recent models of john deere tractors would come in and it, like if i'm remembering this correctly um it was there's some kind of like software which would kind of like lock up and you had to get regular software patches or whatever to, to get pay to for make sure it you're, yeah and essentially you had to pay man. for it and so yeah. they would like lock up your thing and so like that i you think you fucking paid for and like there was there was a whole thing where they were getting like I don't know they were getting like software from like Eastern oh, Europe buddy. or something to like get to like basically jail you had to jailbreak your tractor you had to jailbreak your fucking combine that, like, like to get it working. That, he, hearing that kind of shit makes me think that like we're moving dangerously close to a society where it's like you can't buy a John Deere tractor you can like rent month to month. Right on the subscription service, the John Deere subscription service, and then well, that's what they were. They, that's what they were trying to do, down. but they won that lawsuit. Like the yeah. farmers won that lawsuit to fix it, and it's like, yeah, like they've. But, but if they don't make it, new equipment, the, they don't make listen, new equipment though. That is legitimate. Like we're we're basically transitioning to a fucking usership versus ownership fucking mm. mentality, and we're yeah. slowly shifting to a subscription based economy. Well, it's crazy because like we're looking at stuff like you say that, like the tractors. There is like with Volkswagen right now, you purchase a Volkswagen. Okay, you own it. It's yours. It's brand new. And then they give you an option to subscribe to unlock a higher acceleration for your vehicle Certain that you features, own. Yeah, yeah. You own that. This is your car, and they are hindering the performance of it unless you decide to. Yeah. to subscribe to their fucking That's service fuck. it's the I car it's the car has the ability to do these things already it's not something they have to install and i bet it's i bet it's illegal it's just I something bet they have to like flip a to switch jailbreak it. like, like if okay. someone jailbreak it i bet that it's illegal. probably voids your warranty like it's, or whatever you're that you know. dude i'm telling you like we're going from planned obsolescence to a fucking subs subscription based economy well and it's funny we're, because if, if we're on we're on the way there i 100 percent agree but it's it's funny yeah. to see that flip because all of a sudden these things that don't last will last forever because companies will be like we can now make it once and replace the income that we're doing from the obsolescence the plan obsolescence into just subscription base like there's well, our Zell, income rolling in zell was talking about during the break but they're pushing this big fucking thing now where it's like own nothing and feel better be free why yeah. own anything right rent it Rent. Don't be tied down. Be part of the shared economy. Well, right? like kind of. I mean, part of that. <laughs> so some um, stuff makes sense, though, in my opinion. Some yeah. One of one of the I, one of the solution, like one of the proposed solutions to kind of go against this is like if, or like a market, like in a, in the market would be like products as a service model, where you basically lease a product for its useful life rather than actually purchasing it outright. So this would kind of, in theory, this is supposed to encourage companies to make a more durable product, so they don't have to they don't have to provide more maintenance. They don't have to do more maintenance. They don't have to do any of that. They just how far do does it go do though? Because now now you're renting your fridge, and well, if you want to keep it cold, you got to pay fucking five ninety nine a month. Well, then they wouldn't oh, be you like... didn't make your payment this month, so now the fucking... <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to buy the fridge if it didn't make anything cold. But, like, know, like, but, if, when, but if, all, if, if the fridge cartel all gets together and they're like, this is what we're doing... Yeah, like how, well, how, when does it stop? You know, <laughs> you're like, hey, just so you know, your freezer, your, your premium freezer edition uh, payment is up, and your, fr your freezer is going to go from minus two uh, to seven degrees. <laughs> Dude, it's 100% because you're going to, it's eventually going to be where, okay, you could buy this new uh, fridge freezer combo, it's 2500 bucks, let's say. Or, or, think about it. You can rent it for a low cost of 
but then they do that to all your appliances. Now, now you're so you're only you're paying two hundred bucks a month for appliances, but you don't have to fork out that that much. No, and, so, perfect time, right? You just have this giant giant runaway inflation that's just going crazy. Everything's just out of reach, and then you make things in reach by by doing this by, to people by offering low monthly right? payments. But the catch is. The contract is five or ten. It's a mortgage. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, You're, yeah, it's yeah. like a rental rental amortization. So you, you pay all this money forever, but you never actually get it. You just like well, renting and, your house from the bank forever. So. And when does it stop? Like I read this article from this guy, uh, Tian Zhu, a CEO of Zora, um, and he's a big proponent. His this article was on the Stanford Business um, newsletter, and it says every business will soon be a subscription business. And in this article. Like, this is just him bullshitting, but he basically says, like, my colleagues and I often uh, over dinner and wine would challenge each other to come up with businesses that we that couldn't be turned into subscription model. We tossed out ideas like guitars and cement. We realized it's not about the physical product. It's about what the customer is trying to do. And that inversion of thinking is the root of everything. Mm. Using cement as an example, you realize that flooring is the actual need. There's a whole revolution of industrial carpets now. There's a service contract. You simply pay more monthly fee plus coverages, uses, etc. So you can actually subscribe to a floor. There it is. It's cheaper to get cheap, cheaper, seemingly cheaper to subscribe to the floor than actually just purchase the floor. That one big lump sum one time yeah. payment. Well, and they're thinking and thinking about that, like think about how outrageous, especially in Canada, right now, how outrageous housing costs are. Like, you, like to build a new house, like they'd be insane. Well, yeah, right. It's like, dude, it, it's so a you're little, gonna get cor- oh, dude, you're scary. gonna get corporation. You're gonna get a corporation. They're gonna build a thousand properties. None of them for sale. None of them for rent. Subscribed. Subscription. Subscribed. Isn't that what it's renting? Like giant is? Airbnb. <laughs> like yeah, pretty it's, much. Isn't it pretty much renting? <laughs> like it's, no, but it's good. The wording is going to be changed, and they're going to be able to swindle more money out of you. Yeah, by just changing the wording a bit. Subscribe to this house. Yeah, it'll be painted. Yeah, you don't want to be tied down like, month to month. You don't want to be day renting, throwing your money away in <laughs> rent. Come on, I'd be like, wait, you wait. Wait. No, you subscribe <laughs> to the house because so yeah, you're renting the house, but everything in the house is being. Is under subscription. The paint on the walls, Ooh. the flooring, the TV on the wall, all the appliances. You might own the physical wood of the house, let's say, or rent the wood. You're renting the shell, and you're subscribing to everything inside the inside I, Dan, the house. I can't believe that you would be. Well, that would be like internet would, and stuff. I, like, you know, I can't like, believe you would be surprised that they would. Hmm. Someone would market like rebrand renting into subscribing. The fact that I just talked about an air fryer and then I found out it's a fucking convention oven, and I've just been duped by marketing tactics. Like it's just a rebrand. Like I could totally see them doing something like this and like being like, just rebrand renting to subscribing just, to make it sounds yeah. better, right? And yeah. People are gonna be like, oh, okay, I, yeah, not rent. Yeah, no, rental prices some aren't bullshit. I would just, I would just, I would just like to see like how you have like a subscription agreement worded like on a on, for be, a house, like as opposed to a rental property, pay, like how it'd be like. Yeah. Well, but the furnishings, it's the furnishings, everything that's inside that you're right? subscribing. I mean, you could do that. You could, you could do that. No, you can le- exactly. you can lease We're furniture. Transitioning. You can just you can lease We're furniture. We're transitioning to that now. I mean, they're they're company. Avoid that so big lump. That big that, that big uh, lump sum. That's like that's what I, that's what stores already do. There's like big, was it was it big lots or whatever like big lot stores. We like had you a place do, called Easy Home. Yeah, right? and you just go there and you like rent the furniture. Basically, you go there, you pick out the furniture, TV, it whatever you say. You I never, do installments. You, never, you, you just never do install. You just do install. And how long? How long until it's they do it to the oxygen that we breathe? Yeah. Huh. I mean, if they could find a way to do it, they could. I mean, if you lived on Mars, if you lived on Mars, yeah, like you, if it's a need, somebody's gonna oh, yeah. do it. Yeah, but if you could restrict the flow of oxygen somehow, or the flow was restricted, like on a different planet, yeah, hundred percent. You gotta, you gotta buy. You work for oxygen. That's the credit. That's money, and that's it. I mean, that was that. That's total recall. Like eh. you work for what was the movie <laughs> with, with Justin Timberlake? What was the movie with Justin Timberlake where he has Justin to? Justin uh, time. Well, yeah, yeah, you, you like you barter with time. You get paid in time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope it's called just in time because Justin ah, Timberlake. Just, just that's in fucking time. Fucking great if that's it was. It's was it just in time? Though. Better be. No. Fucking. It might just be called in time. It's long. It's an old movie. Anyways, just sparked a bell there. It was called just in time. No, no, no. No, it wasn't. <laughs> It was not called. It was Someone not probably called made this that exact there joke. On movie. Justin Timberlake doesn't have a movie called Just in Time. It's just called In Time. 
Yeah. There you go. Yeah. They they it's really see that it's not just yeah, in time. starring Justin Timberlake. It's too bad. They really fucking dropped the ball on that one. But it's 100%. it's it's inter- it's 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 very it was very frustrating me to me to like watch this documentary and then we had that talk about recycling. And then you see that like you know, there's this we're throwing this stuff away by design. Like that's how it's designed. And then we talked about like, you know, you think you're going the electronic recycling, you're dropping it off, you think it's it's getting good. Well, like a lot of this stuff, like even in the documentary, like it gets labeled as secondhand electronics so that it can skirt any kind of international laws. And they just fucking dump it in rivers in Ghana for these poor Awful. people to rifle through and try to melt and find metals. Right. And it's just like as far as you can. If they, the stuff that they don't find metal for, you know what they do with it? They burn it. They fucking just burn it. it. They just have burn it. piles of plastic going. Burn like it's just wild to me that. And, and, you know, we have this fucking wool over our eyes here that we're doing anything good. By recycling, doing anything, I don't hey, believe your cardboard right. is getting shredded. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Okay, C- cardboard good. On he- any of my plastics are doing nothing. Uh, any electronic you recycle is ended up in the river in Ghana. <laughs> we talked about on Coke and Spears. It's uh, we pay to ship our recycling overseas, so massive carbon cost to ship that fucking tanker full of our recycling. It gets over there, they dump it in the ocean anyway, and ends up in the garbage patch. And then, because we're such good people, we now take a giant ship over again, burn all that carbon to go collect it out of the ocean, then shred it up, make it into sunglasses or whatever else, which people buy, throw away again, and then they are shipped back across. It's an ever, it's an ever ending well, even this, cycle of shipping even, even plastic to around. Further, I didn't realize that a lot of these small communities that are in the middle of nowhere, like hard to get to, there's a place in Tassus. It's like a logging road, like hard to get to. Well, these communities that don't have like recycling plants and stuff like there, the province subsidizes like recycling trucks to drive there on a weekly basis and pick up their recycling. And the cost to get the truck out there is, you know, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. And sometimes they're only picking up a couple hundred dollars worth of recycling. Mm. Right? Because they have because we gotta recycle. We gotta do it. Right? And meanwhile, I had a, I sat and listened to stories about how like old forestry camps would just fucking bury all the equipment. They just dig a big hole because they didn't want to truck any of it out, and they would just bury the equipment. So you you know somewhere in Vancouver Island, there's just a landfill full of old cat machinery buried, and then the last one they just fucking put a brick on the on the gas pedal and drove it into the ocean. See you later. They wiped their hands. See you later. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. It's all got stuck. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Make sure to return your pop cans. <laughs> I mean, pop cans do get recycled. That's like one thing that actually does. But anything plastic is like low, scam, low man. percentage scam. of on continent recycling. Yeah. Low. It's not, I, I think back to when I lived in Vancouver and I had to organize my recycling in nine different bags. I was like, <laughs> now I'm like, how about you just just throw it in with the trash because that's what it ends up as. Like it's unbelievable. It was unbelievable to me. Now thinking back at. The ridiculousness. Like, we can do better. There's technology out there. It's just too. It's costly, too prohibitive cost wise to recycle. And, off and our our continent. current society in this in this way we consume and the planned obsolescence. There is nothing we are doing that's offsetting the waste that we create in just consuming in this society. There, it's not like the only way to get out of that would be have to. You know, to to move to some model where the you can either convince companies to make stuff that lasts for a fucking long time. Good luck. Good luck with that. Or they make stuff that lasts long, and then you they own it, and so you just are paying them uh, all the time for it for its use. That's what I can it's see. Depressing. But I can see with cars and stuff. Like I could see a model working with cars because I could see a future where no one drives. Like we don't drive. It's just all self driving. I could see that future where it's all self driving cars. So no one owns a car. You just Uber on your app or whatever and a car picks you yeah, up. Yeah, I was in Minority kind of Report. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I just like Minority Report. Yeah. Tom well, I could see it with getting the car and just. There's, there's, there's off some you things go. that make total sense. But that's the thing is where does that line of like this make sense and where it would be exploited by uh, corporations, right? Because cor- we've talked about it before. Like corporations, it's a lot of times these corporations, it's like it's run by bunch of people 
who don't think that way, and it's just like you just got to feed the fucking corporation nonstop. It well, it's not like it's not grow. even like the people. It's like the corporation takes on its own thing once it yeah. becomes its like, own thing. I've, corporations are technically people entities. they are they are yeah. entities so it's like they do what they do and it's for me almost it's 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 hard to kind of be like okay blame the corporation but i'm like it's the beast like it's it was yeah. created to do what it does and how can you blame how can you blame a corporation specifically you blame you know how can you blame a dog for doing what a dog does like exactly. you know if, the, uh, if you can blame the owner there for it you can try and blame the owner but like the dog's dog's gonna dog you know, well, sometimes. when they're going to do sneaky fucking cartel deals, you can blame. Them. Yeah. And that's yeah. what that's that's why and lobby, and you have to and when they you allow special interests and them to lobby mm-hmm. governments to change policy so they can get away with. more. I mean, there, like, yeah, there's like a 100 things that, you know, people can do, like specifically, like if you want to take part in what do you want to do, you know, it, directly like for just a single individual person, you know, informed consumption, you know, take a little more effort into what you're doing and be more yeah. conscious of the choices of the things that you're buying, uh, stuff like that. And, you know, even find, you know, stupid ways. If you want to like, you know, printer stuff, you can find software patches and you want to crack your stuff. You could do that. And, you know, that's something I, you could do directly. Um, otherwise Honestly, it's like, it comes down to like legislation, like this stuff has to, like, you have to put, we have to put people in positions that are going to put teeth on on things like planned obsolescence laws and these things and uh, right to repair and going to be like, look, you corporations are fucking us. We're going to fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, mm, you know? honestly, though, like when when you're going and buying a new electronic, like I used to think this way and like, you know, you'd hear it. like I remember I was a early adopter of like an LG TV and I loved it. I mm. had that TV. That TV never fucking died. I chose to get rid of it. It never died. And I have an LG in here that's very similar from that same era, and it's never died. And I was like, I'll get another LG. And then when I was kind of looking into new TVs, people were like, LGs have gone downhill. They don't, they have a lot of issues. They break in a couple of years. And I was like, now that I'm thinking back to that, I'm like, I think if I was to go buy a new TV, when before I'd walk into electronics and I'd be like, what the hell is this? Like, I have a tech. I've never heard of this before. I'm not buying that TV. I think I might give that cheap TV that I've never heard of a try because they probably are making a decent product because they want you to go, hey, this product's awesome. And they want you to tell people so that other people buy it and then they can start fucking making their shit obsolete. Right, but if you buy a new product from like a new new tech company and then you're like, it worked for six months, it sucks. Like that's gonna hurt them, right? So like, they obviously don't want that to happen. So like, I'm I'm just saying, just buy the fucking no name stuff that you don't know from now on. Well, it's all gonna fucking break down anyway. So save yeah. yourself some money. I yeah, mean, save yourself some everything money. eventually breaks down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's bullshit. It's bullshit, man. <laughs> we should we should have had we should have never had to change a light bulb ever. Yeah. Just be crazy. That's how, because yeah, that that's how technology really inconvenient. Works. That's how <laughs> technology works. <laughs> um, any last comments before we uh, wrap this one up? No, I mean I go all day about every product in here. That I, fucking <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Check check the news for stuff like this. Like if your state is like supporting planet right to repair laws and things like that, I would say check with that local government. Starts there. Be like, you know what? D- you know what doesn't die though. It lasts for a long time. You treat it right. Mothman. A nice guitar. I've had my guitar for 20 years now. Fucking thing's still rolling. Yeah, yeah but the guitars are doing subscription services now. Defender. I would I, I would subscribe that. to a Gibson uh, 339 custom shop, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if you – there's there's way in – you know, if you buy something that breaks right away, there, there might be – depending what country you're on before you just get rid of it there may be annoying ways that you can you know try to get your money back from these companies i know in canada uh you can sue you can sue uh we have a law that is uh it's it's basically um i can't remember the name of it but i've seen it i've seen it done a couple times now you can look, look it up canada warranty law or something but it's like basically when you buy a product you have a reasonable expectation that this product is going to work and if you can prove that the reasonable that your product died in an unreasonable time comparative to the product's lifetime, they, they will just have to pay you. And a lot of times, uh, if you go through the first initial steps, as long as it takes, uh, I've heard stories of people just getting their money back. No questions asked. Like most companies like don't even want to bother with it. They're just like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes fine <laughs> but sometimes you like if you if you're calling those lines you know you're upping it to the management they're all told to say no you know what i mean like, i'm gonna talk to her so yeah uh, gotta talk to the manager yeah so uh 
Anyways, before we, uh, who is the theorite of the week, Andrew? Ooh, I'll put it in the group right now so we can share it. It's pretty great. I don't think you're only going to get this reference if you listen to the last D&D. Oh, yeah. So if you haven't listened to it, <laughs> fucking get after it, boys. Because it's good. Where is it? There it is. It's in the group. That's amazing. <laughs> I've seen this it's one, amazing. actually. Oh, it's so good. This guy, he's a repeat offender, by the way. He's won it a couple times. I don't care, but this is hilarious. Oh, yeah. You're going to make me bleed. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Gonna oh, make yeah. Me bleed. Ah, with a little <coughs> Riley Reed there. Um, yeah, so that's a funny picture. That's Good. Funny. Well done. It's unreal. Could have went a little greener on the skin. He should have He should have tinted the skin a little bit, right? Made her made her a little orcish. But there's you know al- always room for improvement. Hey, there's always room for improvement, but... Hey, you smashed it this week. Thank you so much. Uh, there was a couple good reviews that could have uh, that could have probably made the cut. They were excellent reviews, so well written. I was like, oh my god, this is so nice. And then only a three star. I was like, what? I'm not reading that. Must have been, must have been a mistake. Yeah. It yeah. must have been a mistake. Yeah. Must have been a mistake. Uh, so anything higher than one, we always think they're five. So it doesn't matter. Anyways, um, what else? So anything? We got new supporters. You gotta know by now. If you want to support the show, support your boys, your favorite podcast, early access, ad free, all the other bonus stuff. You gotta go to AlienTheorist.com. You gotta hit the support tab. Sign up on Patreon or Supercast. Get your custom classified feed, and then we butcher your names live, <laughs> live on the podcast. This month's new supporters: we have Snatch Crotch Hunter sixty nine, nice, nice, Jose Galliana, Kashawan. Um, wait, I gotta pre-read this one. Kashawin Mousehoff. Is that a trick Sounds alright. I just thought it was a trick name sometimes. <laughs> Sassy the Squatch. Elliot. Split Hair Chavez. That's that's it for this week. Thank you very much for supporting the show. Woo! And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. See you in after hours. After hours, I can't break, so it's already after hours. What uh, was Joseph? Is that a three times three out of the week? Maybe. Probably he's done. He's it a three time. He's long definitely long. a two time. It might be a three time. Yeah, I think it's three time. Maybe, Maybe it's four time. I don't know. This guy's a fucking post and con it for a Every long time. Every year we reset him. They go back yeah. to zero. <laughs> zero. Yeah, <laughs> give one. They're only good for a calendar year. We give them out. <laughs> he can only claim it in a year. 
The Facebook group is actually becoming uh, more and more active, I see on there. It Went has through a little been. bit of a lull. A little bit Every, of a lull it, for it, a bit. It's a, it's a wave now. Ever since we disconnected Ebbs a while ago. Flows. Disconnected. Oh, that was weird. I just heard some sirens just drive by the studio. I was like, oh, what the fuck is that? It's, fire, it's the fire marshal. I saw your fucking no, extension they're, going, they're probably going down to the fucking trailer park down the way. Yeah, you painted your trailer. You look good. No one's going to 